Hey everyone, welcome to A Geek's Garage. If you follow this channel, you're probably wondering what's been going on with my 1991 Dodge Stealth and the engine rebuild that I've been working on for the past year. Well, the sad truth is, up here in western New York, it is freezing cold. The garage is routinely below freezing in the uh, 20s, uh, usually. And so because of that, I'm not able to do any work on the engine. We're actually at a point where I need the temperature to be a little bit warmer out here to be able to uh, make gaskets um, and kind of seal some stuff up. Plus, I'm just afraid of doing damage when I'm torquing stuff down. Uh, some people may say, well, just throw a heater out here. The problem with that is the heater that I've got seems to throw a lot of moisture uh, into the air and we end up with a uh, freezing slick uh, when the temperature drops back down and the moisture settles on everything. So for now, that project is on hold. Hopefully in another three or four weeks, things will start to warm up around here in Rochester and we'll have um, the ability to get back out in my garage and get back to work on this engine. So with that being said, today this video is going to show you why this channel is called A Geek's Garage and not An Accountant's Garage or A Banker's Garage or A Chemist's Garage. We're going to be testing out a brand new package that came in today and that is the newest Starlink satellite dish. Um, I've been eagerly anticipating and waiting for the Starlink uh, satellite dish to show up. I actually ordered it over a year ago. Um, and finally got to the front of the queue and it showed up today. So what we're going to be doing is just setting it up temporarily. I'm actually going to probably put it on top of my 1984 Dodge Rampage because it's in the general area of where I want to mount this thing permanently. I still need to buy a satellite dish mount uh, so that I can put it up permanently. But for now, we're just going to fire it up and see how it works. So for those of you who are waiting to see more on the uh, Stealth, Stay tuned, hopefully uh, we'll be putting some videos out fairly soon uh, as things warm up around here. Um, and for those of you who are interested in a little bit of geekdom, uh, we're going to just get this thing set up and see how it works up here in Western New York. And with it, let's get going. The setup instructions are extremely simple, just a picture. There's no words or text or anything, just a picture of what you need to do to get this thing going. There's really only three pieces to this. The stand that it comes with, and then uh, the antenna itself, and a small box that kind of looks like the size of a cable modem. It would be nice if it came with a better stand or mount, something for mounting it to, say, your house. Uh, basically, I've had to order a new uh, mount for the antenna. It's still actually not up on the house. Um, even, even as I'm recording this, uh, because uh, the mounts for this thing are back ordered. With the antenna all plugged in and assembled, it's time to find a good location for putting up the antenna. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm just going to be setting this up on top of my car for right now because I don't have any of the mounting equipment, but I want to check and validate that this is going to be a good spot. So I'm using the Starlink app to scan the sky. Um, and you can see it's gathering a bunch of data points um, to check and see whether or not the antenna is going to have a clear enough view of the sky um, that it needs in order to actually get a good signal. So you just open up the app, point your uh, phone at the sky and then uh, move it around per the instructions and after a few seconds here it will actually come up and it'll show that uh, it has uh, no estimated um, obstructions and that this is a good area for me to set up the antenna. With the antenna expertly placed on top of my Dodge Rampage uh, I plugged it in and the antenna immediately uh, powers up and starts pointing directly straight up into the sky. You then need to go into the setup system, uh, connect up to the uh, Wi-Fi network for it, um, and create a new Wi-Fi network. Obviously that's not the, my actual username and password that you just saw there. Uh, once that's set up, the system takes about five or six minutes for it to come online, at least it did for me. Uh, so we'll go ahead and speed that up a little bit here.
and now that it's online we can go ahead and they actually give you in the Starlink app a couple of apps to test your speed as well as get the general stats off of the uh, system so we're going to take a quick look here at what we get as far as uh, stats and then uh, what we can get from actual speed and connection from this So one thing that's kind of interesting to see is when I first set it up, um, I wasn't getting really good connection. And I'm not sure whether it was just that there was no satellites overhead or uh, perhaps whether the, the system is kind of learning where it is um, in the world in order to get better connections. I'm not really sure. Um, but you'll notice that the first couple times I connected up, uh, the speeds here are kind of slow, not very impressive. Uh, but then when I ran the tests a little while later, I started to get um, much better connections. The other thing that's really interesting is um, that it does do a couple different tests. It does a test from the phone to the router and from the router to the internet and from the phone to the internet. Um, trying to sort of help you figure out it, where the um, slower spots might be. If we switch over and we take a look at the network statistics, the uptime is really kind of interesting. If you take a look, it's a little hard to see here, um, but you'll actually see that there was, um, since powering it on, there's already a break in the uptime a couple of times where it wasn't able to connect to an upstream satellite. Um, and again, this is sort of my concern. It is new technology. Uh, there still aren't as many satellites up as I know they want to have up, so I'm wondering whether or not I'm going to have intermittent network connectivity uh, in using this. Only time will tell. Again, maybe it's better at eventually finding more satellites um, as time goes on, uh, but you can see through this whole little spiel here um, that it's actually only just starting to get a network connection again with a satellite. So, um, you know, there is definite uh, downtime, at least in my area. Rerunning the speed tests again, you'll see this time around uh, we start getting a much higher connection rate. Um, so now we're getting uh, about 150 megabits per second, 160, which is pretty good. Uh, that's for download, um, and uh, when it switches over, upload speeds are not all that great. So you can see the, the upload is only around uh, 10, 11 uh, megabits upload. Uh, download was 180 megabits, which is pretty decent connection, but not super great. I also decided to do an independent speed test using the standard speed test app. Um, and actually, this gave some fairly decent speeds once it got going. Um, again, it seems to take a little bit of time to ramp up. Uh, you can see that it starts out um, with, you know, around 30 megabits per second download. And after a second or two, the upload will also run. And we'll see we get somewhere around... 15 megabit upload, um, which, you know, 30 down, 15 up, um, certainly not the numbers that we were just seeing a minute ago from the app, uh, the Starlink app. Um, so I decided to rerun the test one more time. And rerunning the test back to back, all of a sudden now we're getting uh, 150, 160, 120. Uh, megabit per second uh, download but we start to see the same you know 10 12 megabit upload speed so again at first glance this thing is really all over the map as far as consistency um, is concerned Well, there you go. That is 
the first setup of the Starlink satellite. Um, what do I think so far? I'll be honest, I'm not overly impressed just yet. Um, it uh, did take a few minutes for me to figure out what was going wrong. Uh, it turns out that the uh, cable was not fully plugged in. It looked like it was, uh, but it wasn't fully plugged in. So once I got it fully plugged in, uh, the system did start to boot. Uh, there wasn't really too much that explained what was going on there. Uh, once it came up, I was able to run a couple speed tests. Um, and it did connect. The connection speed is extremely spotty. Uh, one minute we're getting 200 megabits per second. Uh, the next minute I'm getting like 5 megabits per second. So uh, it is a very overcast day here. Uh, but it's not all that bad uh, for Western New York, uh, especially around this time of the year. So I'm a little concerned. Um, that being said, it's new technology. I kind of uh, expected some of this. Um, am I going to keep it? That's a real good question. I've only got 30 days to make a decision as to whether or not I keep this or get rid of it. Um, I'm comparing it against a, a T-Mobile uh, home 5G internet access point, uh, which has been working, uh, but it's also working really well right now because there's no leaves on the tree, um, and the path to the local cell tower um, that I'm going off of is basically directly through a tree line uh, starting in the spring, so I'm expecting to have some problems with that in the spring. I had high hopes for this uh, because this has got a clear view of the northern sky, uh, but so far it's a little spotty uh, and I'm not really sure if it's going to work for me for um, for a secondary provider of internet for the home. So uh, I guess we're going to see. Uh, we'll see what happens if I post any more videos on this thing or not. I probably will still buy a satellite um, mounting bracket for this thing and we'll give it a little bit more of a try and see what happens. Uh, but uh, with that, stay tuned. Uh, if you like this video, please be sure to like and uh, comment down below. And uh, we'll see you next time when I'm hopefully working on the car again. With that, see ya.